Welcome back. Okay, I want to give you just kind of a very brief overview of something called non-minimum phase behavior and control systems. So this is something I talk about sometimes, uh, and I just want to make sure that everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say non-minimum phase. Um, and this is non-minimum phase. And this is not going to be super technical. There's a lot of, of uh, kind of mathematical stuff you can talk about with non-minimum phase, but I want you to have like a gut feeling, kind of some physical intuition for what non-minimum phase means in a control system. So uh, basically the kind of first thing I think of for non-minimum phase is that I have a right, uh, a right half plane zero. So I have a zero of my transfer function, a right half plane uh, zero. So if my transfer function g of s, remember this was the Laplace transform um, of y of s divided by u of s. Um, if this was something like s uh, s minus one, let's yeah, let's get it right. S minus one over s plus ten. Even though the system is stable because the pole is in the left half plane, let's draw this in the complex plane. So I have my complex plane. Uh, my pole is in the, the way left half plane at like minus 10 over here. So the system is stable. But the zero is at plus one. Okay, this is my zero at plus one. That makes the system non-minimum phase. Okay, so anytime you have a right half plane zero, you should be, uh, you should be worrying that your system is non-minimum phase and that's going to have fundamental limits on the robustness of your system and what you can do with control. So these are hard systems to control that are non-minimum phase. Uh, not impossible to control, but they're hard to get like really, really good performance because they have strange characteristics. Now, okay, that's, that's kind of the diagnostic. You can diagnose if your system has this non-minimum phase. Another thing that I find um, very useful is how it responds to an impulse response. So the idea is that if you have a non-minimum phase system and you have an impulse response or a step response, it essentially goes in the wrong direction first. And I'll show you what this means. The wrong direction first. Okay. So what I mean is, uh, let's do a step response. Let's say I have you goes from you know, 0 to 1. So u steps from 0 to 1 at some time. Then these strange non-minimum phase systems, what would happen with y is that y would, you know, it's going along, it gets this step, and it actually turns in the wrong direction before correcting. That's very, very strange behavior. So it actually goes in the wrong direction before it then comes up to its steady state value after the step. Okay? So this is the other kind of classic physical observable phenomena of these non-minimum phase systems. So mathematically, they have a right half plane zero. Physically, the system goes in the wrong direction given some step or impulse before it then goes back up to its, uh, its steady state value. Now, there are tons of systems that have this behavior. This is really common. Um, I think the simplest example that, that I like to think about is a, uh, an aircraft. And so you're going to get to see my lovely drawing of an aircraft here. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I'm going uh, to have some aircraft with some wings and some elevators. Okay, that's my aircraft. There's happy people inside. Now, let's say that I want this airplane to go up. Right? I want a higher altitude, so I want to climb in this aircraft. What do I do? Well, the first thing that I do is I kick my elevator. Uh, I kick my elevator to give this a downforce. So I give this thing a downforce by, by jacking my elevator up. That's going to give my wing a more positive angle of attack, and it's going to cause my, my center of mass to lift. But notice that before the center of mass can actually go up, before I get that positive high angle of attack, my center of mass actually went down, right? Because I, I basically kicked my elevator to push the, the tail of the plane down. So the, the center of mass actually dips before then it climbs because of the increased lift. So I think a, an airplane gaining altitude is a great example of a non-minimum phase system where you, you have to first go down a little bit before you can then go up. 
And this is kind of the extreme case where you dip, you know, really, really minorly, maybe like a meter or something. It's a really minor dip, and then you might gain a ton of altitude very, very rapidly. So this system is kind of barely non-minimum phase for lots of, lots of real aircraft, but it is an actual phenomenon that, that you can observe. Uh, another example is, let's say you're trying to parallel park. So I'm just kind of going through all the classic examples. So parallel parking, uh, okay, so there's some car here, there's some car here, and I am this car, and I'm going to try to back up into this spot here. Well, what's the first thing I have to do to move my center of mass to the right? Well, the first thing I do is I jack my wheels out and I back my car up this way. So if you actually look at the, tra the trajectory of my center of mass, it doesn't go directly to the right. It actually goes out before it comes in. So parallel parking is a non-minimum phase problem. And it's part of the reason why parallel parking is actually challenging, right? Like, it's hard because you have to counterintuitively move away before you come back in. Okay, so these are both non-minimum phase control problems because the system, the, the physics of the system forces it to dip in the wrong direction before you can achieve your goal of moving in the right direction, okay? And this has some important implications for robust control because I'm, okay, I'm just gonna be super hand wavy here for a minute, uh, but this is the right intuition, I think. You can think of this dip as almost like a little time delay. It's not, it's not mathematically exactly like a time delay, but it has a lot of the same characteristics. There is some amount of time I have to be going in the wrong direction before I can actually go the direction I want. And that, just like time delays give me fundamental limitations on my bandwidth, how fast of a, of a change I can track, these non-minimum phase systems, these little dips in the wrong direction give me fundamental limitations on how fast of a maneuver I can track in a non-minimum phase problem. So there's robustness limits given by these right half plane zeros. Okay, so the worse my, raf the, the worse, you know, my, my non-minimum phase system is, the bigger this dip, the less robust I am to fast changes, and I have to settle for slower, more gradual control, okay? So, um, you know, parallel parking is a slow procedure. You don't, like, do a super fast parallel parking. The, you know, airplane altitude gain is, you know, not a super aggressive, you know, it's not, it's not aggressive on the order of, of uh, tenths of a second. So if you wanted to make this more aggressive, if you were designing a fighter plane, you would absolutely have to take into account this non-minimum phase behavior. Uh, you'd either try to minimize the non-minimum phase behavior, so make it as fast as possible, uh, or you de develop some kind of, a, you know, some control to compensate for this. Okay, so that, that's the physical intuition. Non-minimum phase has these two, uh, you know, this mathematical characterization of having a right half plane zero and this physical characterization of dipping in the wrong direction before finally going in the right direction. And there are some fundamental physical limitations on the control that you can achieve uh, for these non-minimum phase systems because you can think of this kind of like a little time delay before you get what you want, okay? Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about non-minimum phase systems in passing from now on, so if I ever mention this, you kind of know what I'm talking about. All right, thank you.